Hello, my name is Callie DeMaria and I'm currently an RBT working at Brett DeNovi & Associates. The topic I'll be discussing today is the difference between the terms habituation and satiation. These two concepts are both interchangeably used on accident. I'm here to explain how these two concepts are completely different and discuss different topics that discriminate between the two terms. The definition of habituation directly from the Cooper textbook reads, a decrease in responsiveness to repeated presentations of a stimulus, most often used to describe a reduction of respondent behavior as a function of repeated presentation of the eliciting stimulus over a short span of time. Some researchers suggest that the concept also applies to within session changes in operant behavior. An example would be you are watching Scary Movie 4 for the first time with all your friends and jump at all of the jump scares. You then watch it two more times on that same day and don't flinch a muscle at the jump scares. You have been habituated. The definition of satiation directly from the Cooper textbook reads, a decrease in the frequency of operant behavior presumed to be the result of continued contact with or consumption of a reinforcer that has followed the behavior. Also refers to a procedure for reducing the effectiveness of a reinforcer. An example would be you are craving candy. You decide to eat a bag of M&Ms. You have satiated that craving by eating those M&Ms. The real question is, why is knowing these terms relevant and how am I going to use these in the field of ABA? One scenario where knowing the difference between the terms would come into play would be writing an individualized behavior plan or program. Habituation is a process that decreases the response to a certain stimuli after repeated exposure to that stimuli. Knowing what stimuli the client is not responding to after repeated exposure is very important to know when writing a program. For example, when writing a program for a four-year-old who has trouble communicating, you want to implement DTT for vocal imitation. You want to work on pronouncing all the vowels correctly. Little did you know, before your sessions with the four-year-old, mom was practicing vocal imitation for vowels every hour on the hour. This repeated exposure could affect your session with the client. The process of satiation can reduce the reinforcing effects of a reinforcer that a client used to be very fond of. It is very important to know this so the BC on the case can reassess and find new reinforcers to use in the program. An example of this could be mom feeding the client lunch right before the session. The reinforcer you use during the session happens to be Skittles, so the client may not be motivated to complete what is asked of them due to the effectiveness of the reinforcer. Here are some examples of both terms. Think about which term the example is exhibiting. The first example is, a child is making bubbles out of gum, pop them and jumping after the pop. After a few pops of the gum, the child doesn't jump anymore. This exhibits habituation. The next example is, today you made yourself bacon, eggs and toast for breakfast. Once you get to the office, you see your supervisor brought the whole office donuts. You decide not to have one. This would be an example of satiation. The last example is your baby brother repeatedly likes to scream for attention. After a few minutes of the screaming, you are able to tune it out. This is an example of habituation. Thank you for listening and like and subscribe to help us keep disseminating the science.